Hi and welcome to the fourth part of creating an endless runner game without code. So in the last three parts, we saw how to code the player moment, how to make the camera follow the player, and how to make an endless spawning ground. In this tutorial, we'll be seeing how to spawn obstacles at random places. And we'll also try to increase the difficulty of the game as it progresses. Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. Now to start with, let's create an empty game object. So let's click on the plus sign in the hierarchy and go to create empty. And let's call it obstacle spawner. Okay, let's reset the position. And then set it as a child of our player. So capsule is our player. Let us, let us just set it as a child of the player. And when you set it as child, you can see that it's at Z44.7 from the player. So the size of our ground is basically 100. And when the player reaches the middle of the ground, a new ground is spawned. So it's less than 50. So the obstacle will not be spawned outside the ground. Also, the Y position is at minus one. So let's just zoom in and see if it is inside the ground. So yes, it's exactly on the ground. So if I spawn a game object, it will be half buried inside. So I'm going to use the unity cube as the obstacle. So that will be one unit in size. So I have to make sure that it is on the plane. So I'll set the Y position to minus 0.5. So that way the cube will exactly sit on the ground. Now before we go into the visual scripting part, we need an obstacle. So let's just create a 3D cube. So 3D object cube. So let's reset the transform to 0, 0, 0. So I'm not going to set the Y position here. I'll set the Y position when I instantiate the cube. Now let's just make it into a prefab. So I have a prefab folder here. And I'm going to rename this cube as obstacle. And then drag and drop the cube to my prefab folder. And let's delete it from the scene. Now select the obstacle spawner, which is now the child of the player. And let's click on add component and add a script machine. So we need two variables for this. One is the prefab, which will be spawned. And the next variable is the time duration at which we need to spawn the game object. So let's create the prefab variable first and let's call it prefab. Okay, click on the plus sign. The type should be game object. And it's asking for a game object. So let's drag and drop the obstacle onto the variable. Now the other variable that we need is the timer and it is of type float. Okay, let's set the initial timer to three. Now we need a new graph. So let's click on new and we'll call this graph as obstacle spawn. Okay, let's save it. Now click on edit graph. So we don't need the update function, so let's delete it off. So all we need is the start and we are going to loop the timer so that it keeps on spawning game objects. So the first thing that we need is a timer. So let's go ahead and create a timer node. And when the game starts, we want to start the timer. The start will be called only once. So we'll start the timer immediately when the game starts. Then we need the timer variable and we'll connect the value to duration. So when we're going to instantiate the prefab, the Y and Z position of the prefab will be same as the obstacle spawner. We'll just change the X position to a random value between the size of our ground so that the obstacle is spawned at different place every time. So for that, we need a random range. So let's create a random range. So if we go back here and let's zoom in on the ground. So you can see that this ground is five units on negative x and five units on positive x. So I'm going to set a value of minus three to three to the random random number. So this will be fed to the x axis of the spawning position. So let's create another node vector three. And it will be create vector three. Okay. So the x value will be from the random range. Then we need to get the transform of our obstacle spawner so let's say get position transform okay and then from here we need to get y 
and we'll set it to y and then we also need to get z and we'll set it to z so now we have the position so only thing that is left is to instantiate so let's search for instantiate okay we are going to instantiate game object with the uh, position and rotation this is the position so we need the game object so let's drag and drop our prefab inside okay and connect it to the original now we also need to set the rotation we don't need to change the rotation so we'll set the rotation of our spawner so let's click on add node and get rotation sorry rotation yep transform get rotation and then let's connect it to rotation so since we are doing it in the start this will happen only once so what we need to do is after our game object is instantiated we need to start the timer again so let's just loop this to a start so hopefully this should work let's go back to unity and test it so let's play the game so let's go to the scene to have a better view so yeah my player is moving forward and the cubes are spawning yep so the cube is spawning at a different x value every time so it's a random generation and as soon as it collides it's just standing in one place so when the collision occurs we need to end the game so now that our spawn script is working the next part is to destroy the player when the player actually collides with the obstacle the first step is to tag the obstacle so i've created a new tag called obstacle and set it to the obstacle now let's go to a player moment graph let's click on edit graph we're going to add a node called on collision enter so on collision enter is called when a rigid body with a collider collides with another collider and both the colliders should not be marked as trigger you can watch a video on collision to better understand this just keep in mind that if you don't add a rigid body to the game object or if you don't add colliders to your game object then the on collision enter function will not be called so on collision enter will be called when a player collides with something and when the player is actually moving so it is colliding with the plane so we don't want to destroy the plane we want to destroy the player only when it collides with the obstacle so what we need to do is we'll check for a condition so we'll check for if and the condition of the if will be basically the tag of the object that we have collided with should be obstacle so we'll take the collider and we'll say get tag so we'll compare this so for that we'll use an equal okay so since this is a string we also need to add another string string literal the string should be the obstacles tag so obstacles tag is obstacle so let's connect it here then the output will go to the if condition so if this is true then we want to destroy the object now we want to destroy the player object so we'll just say add node and get game object and we'll connect it to the object so when the tag is equal to obstacle then we'll destroy the game object that is the player itself so now let's go back to unity and test it out so my player is moving forward it's already colliding with the plane but it's not getting destroyed so if i hit the obstacle the player is destroyed and the only thing that is left in programming the gameplay is increasing the speed of the player as time passes by so let's go back to the player graph and what we'll do is we'll just use an add node and this is basically the speed variable so we'll add speed with time dot delta time so since this is fixed update we'll add fixed delta time so we'll get the fixed delta time and add it then we'll set the value to set variable 
uh, it's actually an object variable so set object variable so this will happen after the velocity is set and the object type is speed so let's go back to unity and test it out so the player is selected here and the speed variable is here so you can see as the player is moving the speed is also increasing so i'll try to escape the obstacles my speed is increasing the game's difficulty does not seem to increase because the timer is set at three and the obstacles are spawning farther away so in three seconds i'm able to cover a lot of ground so to increase the difficulty we have to actually decrease the time at which the object spawn so let's go ahead and do that so go to obstacle spawner click on edit graph now here's our timer so what we will do we'll do the same thing we'll get the variable and we'll use uh, add node sorry we need a subtract node and then we'll uh, delta time fix delta time and we'll subtract that then we'll also use a clamp because we don't want it to become zero so the minimum value will be 0.5 and we don't have to worry about the maximum value but we need to set the value so let's keep it at uh, three seconds okay then we need to set variable set object variable and the variable is timer the value will be value of the clamp so we need to add these two into the flow so after the instantiation has happened we have to do this we need to set the timer and once you set the variable then we'll again start the timer okay now let's see if the game's difficulty is increasing as time progresses so i've selected the object spawner so the time here is three so you can see that the time is slowly reducing so it will reduce every three seconds so let's go back to the graph so rather than getting the delta time let's just get a float value okay and subtract that and let's set the float value to 0.5 so that the timer reduces much faster now let's go back and test it so the game is moving yeah the timer has reduced Okay, the difficulty started increasing very fast. Now there's another problem with this game. Uh, the other problem is basically if we pause the game and see on the back, you can see the infinite number of cubes that are spawned. So we also need to destroy them. So let's just select the cube, obstacle, and let's add a sprite machine. And let's we need the player. So let's call it player. Let's create a new graph called self destroy. Inside the effects update, we'll get the position. So we'll say get position. Okay, transform get position of this. And then we'll also get the position of the players. Get position. So it should be transform get position. We'll get the position of the player. And in both the case, we need to get Z. Okay. And we need to get Z. Now, if the position of player is greater than the position of the game uh, of the obstacle then you destroy the obstacle so we'll go into an if and for the condition we'll use a greater than greater than node so if the player position yep 
the player position is greater than the obstacles Z position, then we just destroy. Game object, destroy. Okay, so we also need to set the game object. So let's say get game object. Yep, and this object, yes. So that's it. Let's close it. Only thing you have not set the player. The player type is game object, and we need to set the capsule. Uh, since this is a prefab, we cannot just drag and drop the player inside. So we need to get it in the start. So let's add the start node also. On start, we are going to say get game object tag. So in the tag, we'll set it as player and we'll say set set variable and it's set object variable. So the variable that we're going to set is so only thing that is left to do is to tag the player as player. So let's go back to Unity and select the player and tag the player as player. So now if we play the game, so my object is moving. So let me go to the scene view to so yeah. So as soon as the player crosses the obstacle, it should be destroyed. And if the player hits the obstacle, the player will be destroyed. Our game mechanics is complete. Our player is able to move. The camera is following it. We have an endless plane. We have random spawning obstacles. And when we hit on the obstacles, the player is destroyed. And as soon as the obstacle crosses us, the obstacle is destroyed. So everything is set. Now we need a scoring system and a menu system to restart the game. So that is what we'll be doing in the next video. We'll be creating a menu system so that we can restart the game and also we'll create a scoring system. Hope you liked this video. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.